it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Shumberdish dot me. Chapter 3, lesson number 12, integration using partial fractions. So we're continuing with this integration, but we are going to apply our old friend from Unit 1, Chapter 1, Partial Fractions. So it's often useful to express a rational function in terms of partial fractions before we integrate. And partial fractions was, as I just said, something we learned about in Chapter 1. If you're unsure about partial fractions, perhaps look back to that chapter for a recap. What we will also do is we will apply this rule that we learned about in Natural Logs Lesson 3.3. If we integrate 1 over ax plus b, that will become ln ax plus b, but again you divide by the derivative. So let's apply both of these things to answer these questions. So example 1, part A express x plus 7 over 2x squared plus 3x, take away 2 in partial fractions, and hence integrate that. So, part 1. If we are to express this in partial fractions, what's the first thing that we need to do? Perfect, you need to factorise the denominator. Really, we have to have the denominator expressed as distinct linear factors. So factorising the 2x squared plus 3x take away 2, what will that give you, Timon? Perfect, 2x take away 1x plus 2. So we are factorising the denominator. And if we factorise the denominator, we do have the distinct linear factor, so we can write this as a over x, 2x take away 1, plus b over x plus 2. So we can split it up like that, the way we did in chapter 1. From there, we do need the same denominator as the left-hand side. We've got 2x take away 1 times x add 2. So we need that in each fraction. The a is over 2x take away 1, but we're missing the x plus 2. So multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus 2. The b is over the x plus 2, but we're missing 2x take away 1. So multiply the numerator and denominator by 2x take away 1. From there, because we have the same denominator, we can add the numerators, and that is what we will get. And then from there, if we look at this left-hand side with the x add 7, and the right-hand side, well, we have the same denominator. So if the denominators are the same here, the numerators must be the same as well. So we can cancel the denominators and write down x plus 7 equals a bracket x plus 2 plus b bracket 2x take away 1. Now from there, we need to find the values of a and b. Do you remember, Oliver, what you do next? Yes, you do. Perfect. What do you do? Yeah, you want to eliminate either a or b by picking a value of x. If you eliminate this part here and have 0a, then you would have to set x equal to? Good, set x equal to negative 2. So you will let x equal negative 2, and that way you'd have negative 2 plus 7, which will give you 5. Negative 2 add 2 is 0, so you'd have 0a. And 2 times negative 2 take away 1 is negative 5, so you've got negative 5b. From there, well, you can work out the value of b. So we know b is negative 1. To eliminate this part here to get 0b, well, we would have to set x equal to a half good. So if x equals 1 half, you'd have a half plus 7, which is 7.5. Equals a half add 2 is 2 and a half, so we'd have 2 and a half a. And 2 times a half take away 1 is 0, so you'd have 0 b. From there, you could work out a. 2.5 times what is 7.5? 3! Good, so a is going to be 3. After that, that is the question that we had. We were asked to express that in partial fractions. We split it up, so we had a over 2x take away 1 plus b over x plus 2. Now we know the values, though, of a and b. We can replace a and b with these values. Yeah! So, if a is 3, we'd have 3 over 2x take away 1. And the b was negative 1, we'd have plus negative 1. But the plus and the negative, you can just move the negative to the front. So it's take away 1 over x plus 2. So we've expressed that now in partial fractions. Yeah! Part B, we want to integrate our part A. So, to integrate this, what do you think we would do? 
brilliant. You want to replace the x plus 7 over 2x squared plus 3x take away 2. If you look back a page there, we can see that that is equal to this when it's written in its partial fraction. So we can integrate that but replace it first of all with the partial fractions. So you're integrating 3 over 2x take away 1, take away 1 over x plus 2. That's really just your part A. So now we want to integrate this. And to integrate that, well, because we've got 3, 3 will just stay as 3. Yeah. If we have something over 2x take away 1, well, that will go to ln 2x take away 1. But what do you need? Good modulus signs. So you've got ln and then the modulus of 2x take away 1. But there's something else that you need to do, and what is that, chuga? Good, you need to divide by the derivative of the brackets. If you differentiate 2x take away 1, you get 2, so you'd also divide by 2. Divide by 2, or multiply by a half. From there then, well, you've got this next bit. So you are taking away, and if you integrate 1 over x plus 2, well, that becomes ln, and again, modulus signs, x plus 2. And in the end, say it with me, plus c. Yeah. After that, you can simplify this. We've got 3 times a half. So we'd have 3 over 2. And the rest would just stay as it is. And that would be your answer. Well done. Example 2. Express 1 over x squared take away x take away 6 in partial fractions. And hence, find the exact value of the integral of that between 1 and 0, giving your answer in the form k l n a. So for this, we want to first of all express this fraction in its partial fractions. So to do that once again, the first thing that you would do is Fatima. Perfect. You would factorize the denominator. We want to express the denominator as distinct linear factors. So we factorize x squared take away x take away 6. And Fatima, that gives you... Well done, you're a genius. x take away 3, x plus 2. After that, because we have distinct linear factors, we know if we write it in its partial fractions, we will have a over x take away 3 plus b over x plus 2. After that, to add fractions, we need the same denominator. So a is over x take away 3, but we're missing this x plus 2. So multiply numerator and denominator by x plus 2. B is over the x plus 2, but we're missing the x take away 3. Oh no! So you multiply in the numerator and denominator by x take away 3. So we'd have b times x take away 3 over the same denominator. After that, we can add the numerators together. So we have a bracket x plus 2 plus b bracket x take away 3. After that, look at the left hand side with a 1. Look at the right hand side. We have the same denominator. If the denominators are equal, the numerators are also equal. So you can cancel the denominators and you can say that 1 must equal a bracket x plus 2 plus b bracket x take away 3. From there, once again, you need to find these values of a and b. How can you go about doing that? Piper, help us out. What would you do? Yeah, first of all, set x to be negative 2. Why are you doing that, Piper? Yes, because that'll give you 0a. So if x was negative 2, you'd have 0a, and that would let you find b. Good. So to eliminate this x plus 2, and therefore eliminate a, let x equal negative 2. That'll give us 1 equals, we'd have 0a, and then negative 2 take 3 is negative 5, so we'd have negative 5b. Therefore, b is going to be negative one-fifth. After that, what would you do next? Good, you would let x equal 3. And you let x equal 3 because then that will eliminate this bracket and therefore b, letting you find a. So, you would let x equal 3 and if x was equal to 3, you'd have 1 equals 3 add 2 is 5, so it's 5a plus, that would become 0b, so we don't need to write that. And then the value of a is one-fifth. Good. When we're expressing this in its partial fractions, that was what we had over the page. Therefore, we can say then, we've worked out the value of A, we've worked out the value of B. So really what we're doing is we're getting one-fifth over this x take away 3, but I probably wouldn't write it as that. Plus, and then B is negative one-fifth, so we're adding a negative one-fifth of x plus 2. However, if you write it like that, it just looks very, very silly, doesn't it? What should you do? Yeah, perfect. Move the 5 down to the bottom, leave the 1 in the top, so you'd have 1 over 5 bracket x take away 3. 
Also, because you've got plus and minus, that become minus. And again, move the five down here. So you'd have one over five bracket X plus two. So that is how you should write it. After that, part B. We want to hence find the exact value of the integral of that part from A, giving your answer in the form K L N A. So the first thing you're thinking is, right, well, I want the exact value and I'm integrating that. But what you'll notice is that this part here is really what we had in part A. So we found out just if I go back a page that this can be written as one over five bracket X take away three, take away one over five bracket X plus two. And that was your X squared take away X take away six. So we can rewrite that then as the integral between one and zero of that answer for part A when we wrote that in its partial of fractions. So that is what we get first of all. From there, what well, we can now integrate. We have one over five X take away three. Because we've got one fifth, what we can do is we can just take the one fifth to the side and ignore that so it's a fifth and then treat it as one over X take away three. And if we integrate one over X take away three, you're thinking about these rules here. So you would have LN X take away three, but just remember to include your modulus signs. Then you would take away, again, you've got one fifth, just take that to the side and treat that as one over X plus two. If you integrate one over X plus two, again, using this rule here, we'd have LN X plus two. Again, modular signs. And that is integrated between one and zero. From there, you are subbing in these values of one and zero. So you'd have one fifth LN, and that would work out to be negative two. Take out one fifth LN, one add two would give you three. Then we're taking away one fifth LN, zero take away three is negative three. And then take away one fifth LN and zero add two would give you what negative one fifth LN two. However, from there, what we need to do is we're thinking, hmm, look at this. We've got LN negative two and we've also got the modular signs. Greg, do you remember what the modular signs mean? Yes, perfect. It's the absolute value, which means it's always going to be non-negative. So what you can do is you can say, well, that will be one fifth LN. And we're taking the non-negative value, the absolute value of negative two, which is two. So we're rewriting that as a fifth LN two. Take away a fifth LN three, take away a fifth LN. And then what's the absolute value of negative three? Well, that's three. So that becomes take away one fifth. LN three, and then take away a fifth LN two. After that, well, we can get rid of these big square brackets. If you do that, we just get a fifth LN two, take away a fifth LN three. We're taking away a fifth LN three and we're taking away negative, which will make plus a fifth LN two. After that, we can simplify. How would we simplify that? What would we do? Well, we've got a fifth LN two and we're adding on another fifth LN two which will give us two fifths LN2. We're taking away a fifth LN3 and we're taking away another fifth LN3. So overall, we've taken away two fifths LN3. After that, Cameron, yeah, common factors. You've got a common factor here of two fifths. So let's take that out. That'll give us LN2 take away LN3. And Cameron, go on, finish it off. Brilliant. Think about your log rules. You would have two fifths bracket LN2 take away LN3 would go to LN and we can write that as two divided by three in the brackets after LN. And that will be our answer. Note here we are asked to express our answer in the form KLNA. So we've got something LN something. So the value of K if we were asked for it would be two fifths. And the value of A if we were asked for it would be two thirds. So it's written in that form so we can stop. And it's also an exact value. Don't start sticking that into your calculator. Try these questions, page 69 in the unit one booklet. Any problems, let me know, but there's plenty there to try. And if you aren't sure about partial fractions, you may wish to look back to chapter one to practice them. Best of luck, have fun, bye.